Recode's co-founder and CNBC contributor Kara Swisher joins us now to talk about the implications uh, of all this on Airbnb. Kara, what do you think they are? Well, it's not good. You know, these, these things have happened before. If you remember very early in Airbnb's history, they had issues around people having orgies at these houses, and it got a lot of attention. Um, and this is the same kind of thing, is people using these houses for other purposes than just short-term rental, which is the good side of Airbnb. And I think the idea of, you know, either people being scammed if you're a user or scammed if you're not, if you're, if you're an owner, uh, is, is problematic. And they've got it. Enforcement is critical to this company because it's a very good company in terms of providing a service that people really like. And it has, you know, compared to a lot of Internet companies, has a lot of possibility of profit here, you know, and it's definitely disrupting businesses. But enforcement and the way they manage these platforms have got, has got to be top of mind as they move into an IPO. Yeah, Kara. I mean, it did a big, big investigation, spent months mm -hmm. reporting out for a documentary on this about a year and a half ago, Airbnb and Welcome Guests, which is on CNBC.com. And mm -hmm. Party Houses was one of those issues. But yeah. I think the key thing that we were highlighting is, and we talk about it a lot with other companies like Facebook, for example, but this idea of platform. What are you responsible mm -hmm. for in terms of what's on your site? Yeah. And how does that play out in different markets and what does that mean in terms of regulation coming in in those different markets? A hundred percent and around housing it's even more so you know I mean this, this yep. is where governments get involved and so I think that uh, you know Ryan Chesky the CEO has been very responsive he's not someone to sort of slow roll this he usually responds very quickly the staff really responds it sounds like he's doing the right things the question is anticipation of these kind of things that are going to happen and especially when they've got sort of uh, rivals like the hotel industry which is using a lot of money and a lot of power to try to you know point to these problems of, of, of short-term rentals um, it's sort of the it's not similar it's a little bit similar to around uber in terms of safety of passengers it's got to be top of mind safety of people who use the platform on both sides the owners of the homes and the people who rent the homes and so that there's that you can keep you're not going to prevent it completely there's just no way if humanity is using this that you're not going to have this but you have to have issue things in place in order to enforce it and understand it really quickly and take care of it Kara, this also comes after BuzzFeed had a really interesting story about mm -hmm. a bait and switch that uh, some host, or at least one specific yeah. host, was pulling on a number of people. And it seems like mm -hmm. this goes down to the issue of identity verification right. and reputation verification. And we're seeing this across a lot of different platforms. I is there any kind of centralized fix or at least lesson for all of these platforms around uh, responsibility for people being who they say they are and doing what they say they're going to do. I think it's incredibly hard. I don't I don't I don't discount how difficult it is, but I think anonymousness in any format always leads to abuse. It just does. It does. And in certain cases like if you're in a country that's, you know, an autocratic country, that's a different story, which is what internet companies always push towards. But th there is an issue with with understanding who people are and so you're having a transaction that's honest between two sides. Yeah, Kara, I mean, I just wonder, though, like, and, and I'll use Airbnb as, as the mm -hmm. example again because of the work I did last year and, and also mm -hmm. the fact that it's in the news today. Uh, but I just wonder if that company would even be making these changes, given the fact that these are issues that have been playing out on the platform right. for as many years as they have if they weren't going public right now. A hundred percent. I mean, they have to, they have to, and to all these companies, that was a great uh, uh, documentary. I mean, all these companies have to, as I've said uh, time and time again, anticipate possible problems. And when you're going public, there's all kinds of liabilities for public investors, and they have to really show that they can enforce as best as possible. Again, nobody's perfect. Like, that's, that, that's not what I think people are going for. I think the issue is you can anticipate that people are going to use these, these uh, houses for house parties. And so how do you ban them properly? Can you ban them properly? Instead of doing a, you know, a fast response task force, which is great, they should have been thinking about this a long time. I think they probably have. I just think it's incredibly uh, complex to imagine the thousands of ways people can abuse this system. And I think that's the problem, is, is the anticipation of this stuff. Because it's not good. It's a bad look for them. It's, it's, uh, someone died. It's tragic. Um, and again, it, 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 it sticks to them in a way it doesn't, you know, bad things happen in hotels, bad things happen in all kinds of rentals. But this company, you know, just can't, in terms of going public, it really can't have this kind of thing on, on in front and center when it's trying to sell itself to the public.